I hate winter. When I was a little kid, winter was exciting. When the snow started to fall, that's when I knew Thanksgiving and Christmas were right around the corner. Those holidays meant a much needed break from school, and if I was really lucky, we'd get snow days as well. The poor weather was a perfect excuse to stay inside all day and play video games or watch TV. On the nicer days, I could go sledding or snowboarding with friends and family. I could build a snowman or have a snowball fight or build a fort. The world became a playground for me to enjoy. And then I grew up. The first winter I remember actively disliking was just after my 16th birthday and the responsibilities of driving that came with it. I had bought my aunt's aging sedan and had started driving myself to school, braving 15 minutes of icy roads every morning and 15 more coming back home. By the time I had started working, the joy of snow days had completely eroded, as days off meant time that needed to be made up and project timelines that had to be readjusted. Nowadays, the thing I hate the most about winter is how immobilizing it is. People want to hang out less, and there's less stuff to do. We enjoy what little daylight we can, then spend the rest of the day locked up in our warm rooms. Life becomes more rigid and routine. Shoveling and icy sidewalks suck, sure, but the real pain in my ass is the sense of wasted time that inevitably comes deep into every winter. This feeling is at the heart of It's Winter, also known by its Russian title, Shahade Zima. I've heard people describe It's Winter as a narrative game or walking simulator, but those terms imply a story-driven experience that doesn't quite fit what the game actually is. It's Winter is closer to an empathy game, designed to capture the feeling of spending a winter night in and around a small Russian apartment. No goals, no plot, no structure, just a tiny slice of somebody else's life to explore. I spent about an hour with It's Winter before having my fill, and judging by the average Steam review, it seems like most people clock in about the same amount of playtime, if not a little less. It's short, sure. But considering the game's intention is to impart the player with a feeling of melancholy and solitude, that might be a blessing in disguise. Players start in the apartment's kitchen. It was a little too quiet for my liking, so I decided to turn on the radio. Never mind, bad idea. The game has a few snippets of poetry like this. If you walk too far away from the main apartment complex, this will happen. To give these quotes some background, It's Winter is only one piece of a larger multimedia project centered around a poem authored by Russian poet Ilya Maza. In fact, it reminds me a bit of another immersive exploration game that was part of a multimedia experience, but we'll have to talk about that one another time. There's a lot you can do in your apartment. You can make an egg sandwich, make a tomato sandwich, listen to music coming from the TV, take pills, throw things out the window, throw eggs at the wall, clean your dishes in the bathtub, try and fail to use the bathtub to get water, get frustrated and flush the glass down the toilet, make a mess in your bedroom, add more lights to the kitchen, and yeah, you get the idea. A large part of this game's design is dedicated to objects and clutter. The designers succeeded in crafting an apartment that feels natural and lived in. Little details like the wads of paper under the bedroom desk and the usable appliances in the kitchen are much appreciated. After you're done inside, you can grab the key from your bedroom and head outdoors. The transition from your cozy home to the apartment stairwell can't be understated. It's messy, dark, and alienating. You can knock on the doors of neighboring apartments, but you're never going to get a response. 
The only noise you'll hear is an unsettling mechanical hum that pierces the otherwise silent atmosphere. And venturing outside is rather uneventful, actually. Well, if you let the door close behind you, I don't think you can open it again, so on my second playthrough I went ahead and made sure I propped it open. Not sure if this was an intentional design choice, but getting locked out of your home certainly adds to the misery of the experience. The outdoors echo the loneliness of the apartment complex. If anything, it's magnified by the vast open space. But, at the same time, the buildings tower above you in a way that feels overwhelming. Lights in the window provide signs of life, but with your neighbors holed up behind concrete walls, it does little to provide comfort. The playground is empty and buried with snow. A couple of snowplows toil away on the desolate roads, and yet, even my attempts at civic disruption were brushed aside. And that's it. That's the game. At this point, most people probably call it a day and close out of the program, but I decided to have a little bit more fun inside before wrapping up. Because to me, that's the point. You can go outside, but honestly, why would you? It sucks out there. It's cramped and a little messy, but there's just so much more to do in your tiny little apartment than the terrible tundra that's knocking on your door. If video games are defined by player interaction, the where and when of interactivity should matter just as much as the how and why. The greatest strength of It's Winter is the deliberate distribution of its interactive objects to convey a specific time and place. The game's careful attention to detail in some areas and carefree ambiguity in others form a bizarrely inviting opportunity for experimentation and whimsy. It naturally illustrates the experience of making your own fun on a boring afternoon. Yet, it never shies away from the painful mundanity and isolation that many of us suffer from, despite our cramped living spaces. All these qualities come together to form something that feels uniquely biographical, whether or not it was intended to be. I honestly can't say that It's Winter is an experience that's worth everyone's time and money. It's more of a novelty than a full-fledged experience, but at the same time I left it with a hell of a lot to think about. In a world where people are still somehow mad at games like Gone Home for simply existing and not fitting into a needlessly restrictive definition of what a video game is, I'm happy games like It's Winter are still being made by talented people. Somewhere along the line, I think too many of us lost our appreciation for virtual worlds and their ability to evoke a sense of location. Not just a slice of one either, but fully rendered, three-dimensional environments for us to explore. Not beholden to any specific camera angle or timescale, we can linger and move as we see fit. When made well, an interesting environment can touch the soul as powerfully as any other form of art. It's getting warmer where I live. The days are getting longer and summer feels right around the corner. Maybe when November rolls back around and the snow comes in, I'll open up its winter and contemplate my solitude. And if you're like me, you might just find a reason to do the same. But for now, it's time to leave it behind for a bit and look forward to the heat. Thanks for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed. This is the first review I've produced since I started my Patreon, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Expect to see these types of videos coming out more frequently, and consider checking out my Patreon if you like what I do. Every little bit helps, and I appreciate your support greatly. Have a good night.